in my body yeah. to worship him. Amen. I'm glad that I have the breath in my body to worship him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It is, man, what a savior we serve. Joshua chapter number 17 this morning is where we'll be. Joshua chapter number 17. I just enjoy praising the Lord a little bit. Amen. Amen. Joshua chapter number 17. Go right ahead, Brother Reggie. Let's praise God for saving me. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. No matter how bad I walk away, Bless him, Lord. He's there yes, he with open arms. Amen. He's never too busy right. to no, that's good. hear me, Amen. to answer prayers, just to listen Amen. to prayer requests. No matter what <clears> trials <throat> are going on in our lives, he's there he's with there. open arms, <laughs> waiting to hear them Amen, and God. to comfort us yep. through them. That's right. And I just want to praise him for that and for the trials that he gives us. Because good, there's right? lessons you learn through oh, them. Absolutely. Hey, Absolutely. Absolutely. Exactly right. Exactly right. People always want to begrudge those trials that you're going through. And I'll be honest with you, I do while I'm in them. We all do. Well, I don't know why I got to go through this trial again. But Brother Reggie is exactly right. He's never left me alone in those trials. He's never left me alone. When I give it to him, when I get fully committed to him and allow him to have them, Brother Reggie, then he. He sees me through those. Amen. Ain't that a blessing? Ain't that a blessing? Anybody else this morning? I'd hate to walk all over what God's trying to do in somebody's heart this morning. If God's burdening your heart, by all means, we're in Joshua chapter 17, but I always allow the Lord to order the service, not Pastor Bo. My order doesn't mean nothing. My order doesn't mean a thing. And you go right ahead. Praise the Lord for all that He's done in my life. And I want to thank Him for His sweet son mm. that came to this earth and saw an old rotten sinner like me and decided I'll save that one. Hmm. I just want to thank Him for that because I'm not worthy. Absolutely. I am wicked as they come. Absolutely. And I may not look like that and I may not portray like that, but to a holy God I was. Sure. And I just want to thank God that when He sees me, He sees the blood of His That's blood. right. Oh, Amen. It's all about Him. Thank you for the challenges. This past week was absolutely amazing. The yep. truth that God decided to give to us yep. specifically. And I want to praise him for those things. I want to praise him for the, it's just that little shot in the arm to keep going. To yep. go on one more mile for him. Absolutely. To enlarge our coast. And to all these things. And yep. I mean, look around. We're having to pull out chairs. And it's just the Lord's doing, the Lord's been good. doing yeah. all of this. And I just want to praise him. I didn't want the rocks to cry out. Amen. I want to thank Amen. You. <clears throat> Absolutely. Absolutely. Greatest decision you ever make is to get born again. Yes. All these things that have been testified of by both of these two folks this morning would never have happened outside of Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. Greatest decision I ever made was to trust Christ when He dealt with my heart as a 21-year-old boy. Yes. Amen. Come into my house sometime around midnight, yes. Brother Mike. I'm laying there in bed. <laughs> and uh, God woke me up. Amen. Showed me my lost condition. Yes. 
I said, I've sighed the bed. I got born again yes, that sir. night. Amen. Amen. I didn't happened. become a believer that night. I always believed. Yeah. I grew up where there's a church every hundred foot. I always believed. I always knew that Jesus had come. I always knew that Jesus died on a cross. I always knew that Jesus died for my sin. I always knew that, Brother Swope. That knowledge was, that knowledge, everybody had the knowledge where I'm from. Most people up here have that knowledge. But until that knowledge takes that trip from your mind down to your heart, friend, you ain't got the goods. And I'm telling you this morning, all of those promises in which the Bible has given to us that you hear testified about this morning are not for those that are not His. I'm thankful this morning that I'm one of His. Amen. I, I'm not. I'm not saved this morning because I was. I, I grew up in a home that took me to church. I'm not saved this morning because I had friends that taught in a Christian school. Let me say this: this when I was really thinking about this lady this morning, and, and this is just a good time to put this. Hey Amen. I love the way God works, don't y'all? But I knew a lady who worked at a church, worked in her Christian school, and. For, I don't remember, 15, 20 years. She was there a long time working in that school. Thought she was okay. Thought she was fine. She's a Christian school worker. She knows the Bible. She, she teaches the Bible. She has a head knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. She was okay. And then God came by her way and showed her her lost condition yes, through God. preaching. Right. Brother Peter, she got gloriously born again. Amen. She said, oh, well, he's a believer. She's a believer. I'm a believer. Are you born again? <laughs> Amen. John chapter number three, Jesus told Nicodemus, Marvel not, I say unto thee, you must. You must be born. Not change your ways. Listen, I'm not interested in anybody in this place changing their ways this morning. I care less about you changing your ways. Mrs. Suzanne, changing our ways does nothing for us. If you take a dead leaf and you turn that dead leaf over, it's still dead on the other side. Everybody says, oh, I turned my life around. No, you didn't. If Jesus didn't do it, it didn't happen. Right. Amen. We can turn our lives around all you want to do. Right. But outside of Christ this morning. Yes, sir. Amen. Well, oh, I'm glad to be saved. Amen. I hope you are. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm, I, I, hey, it still ain't worn off on me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, 24 years later, it still hadn't worn off. Oh, amen. amen. And if, if preaching like this bothers you, get saved. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Woo. If this hurts your feelings or make you feel bad or, or you start getting, well, you mad, well, preach, you ought not be talking like that. You ought not get so excited. Then get saved and you'll yes, get excited sir. too. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm still excited about it, Brother Peter. I ain't upset about it a bit. Right. I like it. Amen. I like it. Amen. 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 Joshua chapter 17. Maybe. <laughs> you right here? Challenges us to take that next step where it's brought closer to him. Amen. Um, that he gives us those, those messages that just get a hold of your heart and, and you get so excited, like Pastor was talking about. You're just, you want to live your life for the Lord. You right. want to go yeah. on. You want to keep pressing forward oh, no matter God, how God. hard Amen. Are. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You can take the next step. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. You don't have to go backwards. You can right. keep going forward. Yeah. In yep. a relationship with him and drawing closer and surrendering. Yeah. That is that's the Lord yeah. is just keep uh -huh. putting that on my heart. Surrender this thing. And surrender this thing. And surrender there this. it is. And just keep going hey, forward. Man, go forward. Yep. That's it. Right. Don't stand still. Don't look back. Right. Keep going Amen. In our relationship with him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. Amen. Keeps getting sweeter every moment. Amen. Every step of the way. Sweeter every step. Go ahead, son. Oh, listen now. Uh, 
And I remember we all think about the uh the living and um uh, I remember just sitting there and just crying. And you know, it's not a lot of bad news that say you need to help me do it tomorrow and I gotta do it with your reaction. You <laughs> sure did. Let's get it done. And uh I remember uh running down in the house. <laughs> yeah. That's right, buddy. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We have an advocate now, don't we? That's right. The burden of sin has been lifted. Amen. <laughs> what a Savior. Amen. I like that. I like that. You say, oh, was he a big bad sinner? Nope. He just told you what he was. I went to church. He was on drugs. I drug him to church. Amen. Yep, that's right. Yeah. I drug him everywhere. Every meeting. I drug him to youth camps. I drug him around everywhere. Anytime there was preaching, I drug him there. <coughs> Amen. It's good for him. I don't know if y'all heard that or not, but he said that he got under conviction while at a youth meeting. Amen. Amen. Kids can still get saved, y'all. Amen. If you don't believe that, then you ain't read your Bible, number one. If you ain't believe that, then I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to say you probably ain't even got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Y'all don't die on me now. Don't die on me because I, I'm saying something. It's, it's good when the kids are testifying, but don't die on me when the preacher starts talking. Yeah. Amen. It's still right. Yes, sir. Amen. It's still right. And I'm thankful this morning. I'm thankful to be saved. Yes, sir. Amen. I'm thankful to be able to be serving the Lord. I don't know if y'all noticed this or not, but about every testimony this morning has been about serving God. Yes, Y'all heard that? Anybody else pick up on that? Amen. Joshua chapter 17. If you're there, you can either stand to testify this morning <laughs> or you can stand to read this scripture, all right? Let's stand together. Joshua chapter 17. Joshua chapter 17. Hey, Amen. <coughs> sort of thinking about Brother Swope over here playing that trumpet. Pretty loud, wasn't it? Wasn't it loud? It was loud, wasn't it? Y'all know the Bible commands that I lift up my voice as a trumpet. Amen. Cry loud, spare not. Lift up thy voice as a trumpet. Amen. So if that, that, that kind of stuff, uh, me getting excited like that bothers you, I thought about Brother Swope over there playing that thing. Amen. He didn't have a mute in that thing. I ain't putting a mute in this thing. Ha <laughs> ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Joshua. Joshua chapter number 17. Everybody there? Say amen. All right. Verse 14 is where we're going to look at. Joshua chapter 17, verse 40. Y'all shouldn't have sent me to the refreshers conference. <laughs> I got refreshed. I got plum refreshed in my spirit. Amen. And uh, so we, I uh, will, amen. <laughs> and the children of Joseph spake unto Joshua in verse number 14 of Joshua 17, saying, Why hast thou given me but one lot and one portion to inherit, seeing I am a great people? For as much as the Lord hath blessed me hitherto. And Joshua answered them, If thou be a great people, then get thee up to the wood country and cut down for thyself there in the land of the Perizzites and of the giants. If Mount Ephraim be too narrow for thee. And the children of Joseph said, The hill is not enough for us. And all the Canaanites that dwell in the land of the valley have chariots of iron. Both they who are of Bethshean and her towns, and they who are of the valley of Jezreel. Look in verse 17. And Joshua spake unto the house of Joseph, even to Ephraim and to Manasseh, saying, Thou art a great people and hast great power. Thou shalt not have one lot only. But the mountain shall be thine. Hallelujah. For it is a wood, and thou shalt cut it down, and the outgoings of it shall be thine, for thou shalt drive out the Canaanites, though they have iron chariots, and though 
they be strong. You can be seated this morning. These verses that we'll be looking at today are found within a section of Joshua that we see that the 12 tribes of Israel, or, or rather Jacob's sons, are receiving their inheritance. If you were to go back into chapter number 13, there we find Reuben and Gad gaining their inheritance. And it goes all the way up through, through about chapter 19. And uh, so about midway here in chapter 16 and 17, we find uh, these two uh, these two fellows right here. And uh, we find that, uh, that Joseph had two sons. If you'll remember when we went through our series not too long ago about the tabernacle, that you never saw Joseph as one of the tribes of Israel, right? You always saw Ephraim and Manasseh, right? You remember that? And those were his sons. They were given a half blessing, if you will, or a half inheritance because of they were both of their, their father Joseph. I want to draw our attention to these two men and their conversation that's happening here uh, in the book of Joshua as we read here. Uh, I, want, uh, I want to preach on... Our commitment to the things of God. I do. And I find it. Oh God. That everything that was talked about this morning in the testimonies. Were about serving, being more committed. Amen. To the Lord. And you say, oh you must have told him. I didn't tell nobody. Only person knew what I was preaching. Title wise. Was Miss Nicole. She had to make that. And then Brother Reggie just put it, and they didn't even know where I, what I was going to be talking about. Just title. Amen. <laughs> she forgot. Amen. But I want to preach on this thought. The joy in our commitment. You realize this morning that there can be joy in serving God? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. It's not drudgery, y'all. Serving God don't have to be hard. Serving God can be, and let's just be honest, should be joyous. We should be able to smile about getting to come to church. We should be able to smile and get happy about getting to read our Bible. We should be able to smile and get happy whenever people say, help me pray about this or will you pray with me? Glory, hallelujah. Yes, let's pray. You can say, oh, well, those things are so hard. Bless your heart in every essence of the word. Amen. It's not hard. It's not hard. Living for this world is hard. The Bible even says so. Amen. It's not hard to live for God. Getting to come to church and read our Bible should be the greatest things that we love to do. However, these things do take commitment. Yes, sir. Commitment on our part. It takes commitment to get up in the morning. Yes, get yourself put together and come to church. Yes, Amen. Amen. It takes commitment to do that. Am I right? Yes, it was all, oh, I just couldn't, I just couldn't do it. You didn't have a problem Monday through Friday going down to the job house. No. No. But we got a problem on Sunday going to the church house. Right, but Tom, I, I, I have a problem with that. For folk to say they saved. Amen. I do. I do. You can say, oh, well, you're just one of them. Yes, I am. Amen. Yes, I am one of those that believes the Bible. Yes, yes I am the one of those that believes that when Christ yes, saved me, Lord. He's got all of me. Yes. Amen. Yes, I am one of those. My name's Bo Redman. I am one of those. Yes. Amen. Ephraim and Manasseh said to Joshua, they wanted more. And Joshua said in verse 15, you want more? Get busy. You know what he said? He said, go up there and cut the wood down. He said, there's wood all over the place. Go up there and cut it down. You want more land? You're going to have to work for it. You want more? You're going to have to work for it. Nobody is going to do it for you. And nobody's going to do for you what the Lord can do for you. If, one of the biggest little words you'll ever find, if we are fully committed to Him. So let's preach for just about three hours a day on the joy. Don't let me lose you. I ain't got that much in me, all right? Don't let me lose you. The joy in our commitment. The joy. We can have joy. 
and in being committed. What has been our theme all year? All in. All in. I want to be all in. Brother Peter, how do I get all in? Can I be all in if I'm uncommitted? Uh -uh, not a chance. We're going to talk a little bit this morning. We'll preach what we can, and uh, we'll, 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 we'll see where the Lord goes from there, all right? Let's pray and ask God to meet with us. The joy in our commitment. Brother Mike Brown, you pray for us, please. Father, we just pray that each and every night, Lord, that this be that war, Lord, that I prepare. Yes, Lord. You would have us to do it. Yes. Father, we just pray. Just pray to it today, Lord, that one soul mm. would be one to the way. To the preaching of your word, Lord, we just pray that. Just grab that night in hand. Mm. Lord, just show them the need for salvation. Amen. Would you agree with me this morning that commitment is something we find lacking in our day, in our society? When we find it lacking, there seems to be little to no loyalty to the commitment of people in their lives. I'm talking about, I'm talking about spiritually and sexually this morning. I'm talking people just have no, no commitment to anything anymore except themselves. It's all about me, 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 right? We find it in jobs. We find it in marriages, friendships, and unfortunately we even find it in, in, in churches, the lack of commitment. Yet I find one of the saddest, saddest, uh, lack of commitments is in the church. And, and we find that, uh, too many times, too often, uh, in our commitment in serving God. Amen. You can say, oh, well, I give it the best I have. How would you feel? I had a boss man tell me this one time, Brother Peter. I looked at him and I said, Paul, listen, man, I'm giving it the best I got. He said, whoa, never say that to me. I said, you don't want to hear that I'm giving you everything I got? He said, never say that to anybody. He said, it's a learning moment for you. I said, well, teach me. He said, I may look at you one day and say, your best ain't good enough. Leave. How would we feel if the Lord was to look at us and say that? Lord, I'm giving you everything I got. Lord, I'm giving it the best I have. Lord, I'm using everything that I can. And the Lord looks at you and says, well, your best ain't good enough. I'd venture a guess this morning, Brother Mike Brown, none of us give 100%. I'm not asking for 110 because you can't have 110. Jesus doesn't ask for 110 because you can't give 110. But you can give 100. You can give it all you got. We can go all in. We can give it everything we got. You know how, Brother Mike Brown? Because I've been bought with a price. I've been bought with a price. No longer am I mine. I'm His. Amen. I'm thankful this morning that I'm His. And He is mine. Something that I find that, that many times, and I believe you will agree with me here, that bothers me. And I think it would bother you this morning if you put it in the right context of your life. Anybody here pleased when your children were in school, or if your children are in school now, and they start bringing home D's and C's when you know they're A's and B's? Anybody pleased with D's and C's when you know your child is capable of A's and B's? So are you telling me that you don't settle for mediocrity? Right? We don't settle for mediocrity in school. Give it all you got. Give it the best you got. Right? I agree 100%. I don't settle for mediocrity. Anybody just give it part of what they got at the job when the boss man comes around? No, boss man comes around, we get busy. <laughs> right? Hey man, we get busy. Brother Peter? You just 
haul when you want to and when you feel good and everything's right, just, nah, I'll just, nah. mediocrity. You go broke. We can't do that in a job. Right? Can't do that. But yet, Brother Tom, we find so often in our service to the Lord, mediocrity is okay. I'm okay with mediocrity. Brother Michael Swope, if we were to halfway do our, if, if we were to do our jobs the way we serve our Lord, how many of us would stay employed? Oh, wow. That's good. Can I tell you? None of us. Not even your pastor. Amen. That's good. Amen. You said, Pastor, you're supposed to be walking with the Lord all that's supposed to be. So are you. Yeah. Don't don't put it on all oh, a pastor's supposed to be this, pastor's supposed to be that. We all are. We're all supposed to be there. We're all supposed to be serving the God, serving the God of heaven with everything that we got. Amen. You say, well, it, it, it's hard. You think walking up Calvary was easy? Let, let's, let's kick her back for a minute. Let's think about Calvary for a moment. I just want to get to Calvary anyway. Let's think about that for a minute. Jesus, for something he had not done wrong. Brother Reggie was beaten. He was bruised. He was spit on. Sorry, y'all. We'd had a problem right there. But he was spit on. He was cussed. He was treated like a dog. And yet he carried that cross. He went to Calvary. Brother Tom, he, where would we be today if he had said, it's too hard. I'm just going to halfway go. I don't want it anymore. Where would we be? Lost on our way to hell. There are several sitting in here today that's in that shape this morning. Several. You can say, oh, I've made a profession. I'm not interested in your profession. Right. Amen. Your profession means nothing to me. Exactly. I'm worried about your relationship. Yes, sir. I ain't worried about your religion. Yep. Oh. Everybody got religion. Yeah. Everybody gets a little religion when they get ready to get in trouble. Yeah. Everybody gets a little religion, right? Oh, oh, the law's going to put me in jail. I got a little religion. <laughs> I ain't interested in that. Yeah. I'm interested in your relationship. Yeah. Where are you with God this morning? We talked about Nicodemus just a few moments ago. He said, Marvel not, I say unto thee, you must be born again. John 3. Have you ever been born again? Have you ever trusted Christ to be your Savior? I'm not talking about what you've changed. Thank God if you've changed some things. But that don't save you. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I, those, those things, I, well, but when I was a small child, that's fantastic. How about your, how about your life? Does it line up with Scripture's? Or you become that new creature, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if you become that new creature. Because the Bible says, any man being Christ, he is a new creature. Yeah. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things. This, These songs, oh, I hate those songs. They just, eh. What, what do you got against hymns? Amen. Sing unto yourselves psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. As a child of God, that does something for me. As a child of God, when Gabby started singing, I will lift my hands and worship you again. I'm not worried about what Joe at the end of the aisle is thinking about me when I got my hands up. I'm not worried about what folks think of me. You can tell that, can't you? Hallelujah. Amen. I ain't worried about it, Brother Mike. Why? I'm worried about what he thinks of me. Amen. Amen. I want to worship Him. Yeah. Those songs, those songs, boy, I get excited singing yeah. those songs. Yeah. Amen. I do. You know, a lot of times we do. Can I preach a little bit? Y'all don't yes, mind, sir. do you? I get a little get a little perturbed up here from time to time, and you can say, Pastor, you ought not get mad before you preach. Y'all help me then. Amen. It bothers me, Brother Peter. And it ought to bother you, by the way, yeah. when we start singing Amazing Grace like this. Amazing grace, how sweet. Are you really thinking about amazing grace? 
I mean, we sing victory in Jesus. Do you have victory? Hey, Amen. Everybody ain't like me. Hallelujah. Y'all didn't have to say it. I did it for you. Everybody ain't like me. I get that. I understand. I understand. We sang a song this morning. Said this robe of flesh I'll drop and rise and seize the everlasting prize. What's the next? What do you say next? And shout while rising through the air. Amen. It's going to happen sooner or later. Yes. <laughs> Amen. It's okay to be excited. Amen. And it's okay, it's okay to and not shout. I'm okay with that. I don't care. I'm not make, trying to make everybody be like me. But what I am saying this morning is you can't sit on your hands with a frown on your face all day and say, I'm serving Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I got something for you. Tell your face that you love Jesus. <laughs> if you tell your face then we'll all know that you love Jesus. Amen. 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 It's okay. It's, all, it's okay. Amen. I love him this morning. And I hadn't always. Brother Peter, I hadn't always loved him. Oh, I said I loved him. But it was usually, I'd say his name a lot too. Usually had an expletive to following it. Amen. I'm not giving Satan any kind of glory this morning, but I just want y'all to know I wasn't born in a pulpit. <laughs> Amen. Pastor Bo's got a past, and I like it to be buried. Yes. It's a song, Jesus Buried My yes. Past. <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. You want your past buried? I can tell you this. We was talking about Nicodemus. John 3.16 says that for God so loved the world. Amen. Who? The world. You in this world? Yeah. He loved all of us. Yeah. Carol, he loved us all. And I'm thankful this morning that he loved this world, that he gave his only begotten son. I get hold of this. Whosoever. Yeah. Whosoever. Yeah. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to look down at your hands. Do this. Look at your hands. I ain't going to make you do nothing. I ain't going to make you lift them. Just look at you. Look at your hands like that right there. Now look at them like that. Look at them like that. Right there. Turn them back and forth. Y'all know who those hands on to? A whosoever. That's a whosoever's hands. Whosoever's hands. Amen. Whosoever shall what? Call upon the name of the Lord. Greatest part, Brother Swope, right here. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, not might be, not can be, not could be, not well, we'll think about it for a few minutes. No, he said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hey, man, glory. I'm glad that I'm a whosoever. I'm glad that I called upon his name. I'm glad that he honored his promise and he saved me. Amen. I didn't have to go through confirmation classes. I didn't have to go do this, go do that. I didn't have to stand on one leg, rub my belly and pat my head. I didn't have to do all that stuff. Amen. I knelt down a sinner. I stood up a saint. It's that easy. We overcomplicate. Brother Bobby, we want to make you do this. You got to do that. Oh, come to this class. Come to that class. Oh, you got to talk like this. You got to look like this. Walk like this. Hey, I believe I believe in walking right. Amen. I believe in talking right. Amen. But that don't save you. That don't save you. See, I used to do that whenever I got, got around the church. When I get around those churchy people. Everybody know those churchy people. That's y'all. <laughs> Be weird around them, didn't you? Didn't it feel weird to be around them? You know, you just always think, I'm going to say something that I shouldn't say. Am I the only one? No, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't have to watch what I say anymore. Right? I don't have to think about what I'm saying anymore. Because those words just don't run out of that, that well like it used to. Amen. You know, because out of the abundance of the heart, yeah. the mouth speak. Yeah. Amen. God changed me. Yes. Brother Tom, God changed my life. Yeah. God changed my tongue. God changed the things that used to go in my ears. 
God changed the things that used to go in my eyes. God changed the things I used to listen to and watch is what I'm telling you. God changed those things. I'm not the same man that I used to be. And everybody in this place can say hallelujah right there. Amen. Y'all probably wouldn't have liked me. May not like me now and that's okay too. But understand this this morning. I'm talking about service. Church. I hate to call, throw a cold blanket on a good hot fire. But it's only as bad as we've allowed it to get. Amen? How many people are sitting here this morning because of you? Direct reflection of you. Now, I don't want you to don't listen. Listen. Don't feel bad. I don't want you to feel bad. Unless it puts you busy, then feel bad. But I don't want you to feel bad. I just want to get after it. Amen. Remember, how, 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 I believe several years ago, when I first came here, four years ago, we had those pretty orange chairs. <laughs> that if you were very wide, you wouldn't get in them. Amen. I had to have my phone on me. First time I sat in, I sat sideways. I said, whew, this ain't going to work for me. Amen. But I told you then, who are you praying for to fill this seat, to fill that seat? Mrs. Andrew, we talked about it. Who are you praying for to fill these seats? Now, we got two precious little ladies right here on these seats today. Amen. But I'd still pray for others to fill these seats. Why? Because we can get more seats. Amen. We'll put them up front right here. Be good, Ava? She's like, I don't know about all that, Pastor. I don't know about all that. But who are we praying for to fill these seats? I prayed for you to fill that seat before I even knew you. How'd you do that, Pastor? I've been praying that my daughter would have somebody close to her age. So I prayed for you before you ever got in that seat. Amen. You can say, oh, well, you didn't, you don't get no credit for that because you didn't call her name person. Call, say what you will. I don't want no credit. God gets the credit. Right. Amen. Right. But who are we praying for? Think about this, Hope. Yeah. Y'all can look around. There's some little heads all over this place. Oh, thank God. All I was looking at is a bunch of white hair or no hair when I got here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I'll take more of them. Hallelujah. Ain't that right, Chris? Woo! A I'll take more. But we didn't have these little heads. We didn't. We didn't have that. Look what God has done through the commitment of His people. Now, church, we're committed to serving God. At least I, I pray that we are. Amen. Does our commitment match? Reverse that. If your commitment is what this church was depending on to go forward, how far would we go? How far would we go? And say, Pastor, you're being mean this morning. I've not begun to be. This is sweet. Yes, it is. Amen. All it is is just a challenge. All it is is a challenge. Brother Reggie, you can say, Pastor, I don't, I don't want you to push me. What's, what you got against having crowns in heaven? Yeah. I want to push you. That's my, it's my job, right, right, right. if you will. It's my calling to push all of us that you can have crowns. Maybe sitting here lost this morning and think, why are you so pushy about salvation? Because I want to spend eternity oh, with you. Right. You don't even know me. I'd like to. I want to spend eternity with you. I want to spend eternity. These kids, why do I preach these kids? Why do I love on these kids? Because they need to be saved. Yeah. Amen. I don't care at what age. Yeah. That doesn't matter to me. That's up to God. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see them get saved young though. Mm -hmm. I'd love. I, here comes Miss LB down the aisle. Mm -hmm. I pray for her now. Yeah. Matter of fact, when I found out they was pregnant, I started praying God save her. Right. I started praying for her salvation then. You say, she wasn't even born. What would it? I prayed for salvation. Yeah. Amen. Pray for each one of these kids on a daily basis. For each one of y'all on a daily basis. Listen. There's some in here 
I pray you get saved. Or just get serious. You very well may be saved. I don't know anybody's heart. But I pray you either get saved or you start getting serious about the things of God. There is a world out here dying and going to hell. There are people sitting in this congregation right now that are on their way to hell. And I don't want to see it happen. I don't want to see it happen. Because God so loved the world that he gave. How about it this morning? How about it? Do you remember the day you got saved? Glory, amen. You remember that day? Let me say this to you. It's hard for something as big as the God who spoke it all into existence to come and live in something as small as us and there not be a change that takes place. Amen. Do you remember the day you got saved? Not the day you cleaned up and started doing but Listen, I ain't near a time I've never in my life. Miss Linda Harmon has probably caught more fish than most everybody in here combined. <laughs> but Miss Linda, how many times have you ever cleaned a fish before you ever caught it? Never. Don't clean up thinking, oh, well, I got to clean up, come to church. No, no, no. Come like you are. Yes, sir. Just don't leave like you were. Yes, Amen. Amen. Come like you are. Get born again. God will change you. God will save you. God will put your feet on that solid path. He will establish your goal. Just like He did so many. You say, oh, all these people getting excited about that. It's because they know what it's like. I remember what it's like to wake up on a Sunday morning, not have a clue as to where I was. Go back to work on a Monday, not have a clue as to where my bank account went. I remember what that was like. But I'm thankful I wake up early on Sunday morning. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Times I used to be going to bed on Sunday mornings. I wake up early. And I get dressed. And I get ready to come and worship my Lord. I ain't always been like that. And if coming in here this morning was drudgery to you, it don't have to be. I'd love to introduce you to the one who saved me. I'd love to introduce you to the one that changed changed my family tree. Changed my family tree. I sat the other day and started thinking about my children. I started thinking of all the things I used to say and want for them. I used to think about what when they get this age, I'm going to do this. When they get that age, I'm going to... And it was all for the world. And then I <laughs> hear her singing this morning. I saw them down at a refreshers conference being a blessing. They sang tons of songs down, at, down in Yarmouth the other day when I got to preach down there. And I start thinking, Miss Robin, where was my tree headed? My family tree didn't look like this. Y'all, I can tell you in my past, my family tree don't have preachers in it. Amen. No. They're not ministers. They're prisoners. Amen. My family tree is full of prisoners. Amen. Full of crooks and convicts. You say, oh, all your people are like that? Not all of them. There's some good people in my family. But not all of them. You want to you change the trajectory of your family? Get all in. Yes, sir. You want to change the trajectory of your family and change your family tree? Get born again. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. Let God change it. Brother Peter, I can't do a thing. You can't do a thing for your family outside of God. Right. Amen. Amen. It don't matter. It don't matter how much you give to them. It don't matter how much you, you love on them. It don't matter how much you show them. They can still go the way of this world. Yeah. But I'm thankful, Brother Reggie. I've got an advocate with the Father. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Because Chris, I'm born again today. I'm saved. My kids can still mess up. But they're going to have to go through the prayers of Daddy who can actually reach heaven to do it. Let's get serious. Let's get serious about the things of God. You're here this morning and you're lost. 
and I'd love to talk to you. Amen. I've got several men in here that would love to talk to you. I've got several women in here that would love to talk to you. I've even got a couple of youngins that I, I believe I could take a Bible and show you what it means to be born again. Make me a promise right here before we pray. Make yourself a promise. You won't leave the same way you came in. Something that was said this morning ought to change us. Even if you're saved this morning, something said ought to change us. But if you're lost, I know something that was said this morning can change you. But it's going to take trusting in Christ to do it. Heads bowed, eyes closed this morning. I'm going to have you.